Hi, Leslie Rogowski here. I'm the creative director for The Beadsmith. And today it's my pleasure to show you how to make beaded beads with nibbit beads. I'm going to show you some of the different kinds of nibbits that are available and then I'm going to take you bead by bead, step by step, through the making of a single beaded bead. And after that it's up to you how you put them together. Two hold nibbits are little triangular shapes with two holes in them and they come in a myriad of colors and finishes. You have pastels, Nebula in opaque, shiny, and matte. Tweeties, which I really like. They have this texture to them, like a granite finish on them in lots of different colors. The latest and greatest, Nibbit Duets, which like our other duets, have the two colors. So think about the design potential of those. Metalust, yummy, yummy, very metallic looking and shiny, and a variety of opaque colors. And this is just uh, just a fraction of the things that are available to you. So as you make your beaded beads in our tutorial, just think about the color play that you're going to be able to bring into your work with the nibbits. To make a nibbit beaded bead, you need nibbits, super duos, size 8 seed beads, size 11 seed beads. Now I brought in a second color of size 11. You can use one color or two colors. And actually, as you play around, you're gonna to want to experiment with lots of different ways to bring these together. For one beaded bead, you need 12 nibbits. You also need size 10 beading needles, six pound fire line to blend in with whatever colors you're using. I'm gonna use black specifically because it's going to show better in the video you're watching, and some kind of a snip or scissors. You're going to start with about a yard of thread, so I have that already strung, and I'm going to work in flat right angle weave first, picking up a nibbit, an eight, a nibbit, and an eight. And I'm picking up the nibbits through the wide end. You can see how there's a wide end and a narrow end, like in a triangle. So we're going to be working through the wide ends for the flat right angle weave section. This is the part that goes around the middle of the beaded bead. I'm going to string these four beads to the middle of my thread. And I'm just going to pull it to the middle. And then you're going to tie a knot a square knot in the middle of your thread and you want to make sure that those wide ends of the nibbit face each other like this. Okay, I'm going to finish my knot. And I'm stringing it to the middle because you're going to use one side for one half of the bead and one side of thread for the other half. So now I have my working thread coming out where the knot is. You want to pass through the size 8 bead. So you have your four beads. Now I'm going to pick up a nibbit through the wide end, a size 8, another nibbit through the wide end. So I have a nibbit, an 8, and a nibbit. My thread is coming out of the eight already strung and I'm going to work in flat right angle weave. So I'm going around in a circle back through the size eight. And I'm going to make sure that the wide ends sit together. And now I'm going to go through, continue my circle like in flat right angle weave. I'm going to go through the nibbit and up through the eight again. And you always want to make sure that those wide ends stay together like that. You don't want them to flip because it's going to make your beaded bead looser if you let them flip when you try to tighten it up. So there I'm going, continuing my stitch, and I'm going through the size 8. 
Now I'm going to pick up another nibbit, size 8, and nib it through the wide end. Now I'm going in the opposite direction. So you're going to work in flat right angle weave, picking up nibbits in size 8s. Make sure that stays flat. So let me lay that down so you can see here how it's starting to look. So I have three units and I want to continue this unit now. I'm going to go through the nibbit and out through the size 8. Don't sew your finger in. There you go. And down through the size 8. And you're going to do this for five units. So I'm going to add two more units now. Pick up my fifth one. Nib it, size 8, nib it. Check the holes. Thread's coming out here. I'm going to go around this way. Okay. Now, the equator of the bead actually has six units. So your sixth unit is where you're going to connect it. So I'm finishing my fifth stitch here. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to bring this into a ring and I'm going to bring my two end size eighths. Now I need to add a nibbit here and a nibbit on top to make my sixth unit. So I'm picking up a nibbit through from the wide end and I'm coming out the size 8. I'm going to go through the other size 8. That nibbit goes there. And make sure that the wide end is facing in. Now I'm going to pick up my other nibbit. I'm going to finish my stitch by sewing through that size 8. And making sure that those ends, the wide ends, face together. So this is what you end up with. That's the middle of your beaded bead. So your thread is coming out the size 8. You now want to go through the next nibbit through that same wide hole and pull it tight. So step one is finished. Flat right angle weave around and connect it. The next step is to add size 11 beads in between each space here. And you're going to pick up an 11 and your thread is coming out of the stitched hole of the wide nibbit. And you're going to continue sewing through the stitched hole. So I'm going to pick up the little pearly white 11 that tried to get into the act earlier before her cue. Picked up the 11 stitch through the stitch hole. Can you see where that sits there? And we're going to do that all the way around. And I just keep it kind of on the tip of my thumb or finger. You can work around a dowel rod if you want. However, this will cup into the round shape, so eventually you're going to have to take it off a rod. You might as well just keep it on your finger. I have an 11. I'm going to go through the next nibbit. You can see that sitting right there, and I'm going to do that all the way around. Another 11. This is my last one for this round. When you go through the nibbit, the last nibbit, you also want to make sure that your needle then goes through the next 11 and the next nibbit after that. And this is just so that you complete around and you want to tug that as snug as you can. Now we're going to step up because we're going to need to get to the holes at the pointy ends of the nibbit. So all I'm going to do is bring my needle up and go in reverse direction through that hole. Okay. That round is finished. You've added size 11s on that side of the beaded bead. Now you're going to want to pick up super duos. I'm going to bring them over here. And you're going to pick up a super duo and go through the next pointy end hole of the nibbit. 
So the super duos sit like that. And you're going to do that all the way around. So you're exiting a pointy end of a nibbit. You're going to add a super duo. Make sure they stand up like that. Pick up a super duo. Check the hole. You have six all the way around. So in total, each beaded bead uses 12 super duos. Six on each side. One, two, three, four, five. And make sure, did you see how I gave a yank so that they're standing up so that the threads are not twisted when you add your super duos? Now I have my last super duo, and I'm going to go through the nibbit and the first super duo that I added in this stitch. Step up by reversing direction, just like you did with the nibbits. You're going to reverse direction, and you're going to go through the open hole of the super duo, like this. Yes, you see the thread on the side of the super duo. However, when this bead is pulled together and the other seed beads are added around the end, you're not going to see that thread, so don't worry about it. Okay, now we're going to have to bring our beads together. And here's where we use size 11. You can use the same color that you just used. You can bring in different colors. I'm going to use the same color. I'm going to pick up a size 11 and go through the open hole of the next super duo. Can you see how that sits between the super duo right there? I'm going to do that all the way around. Pick up an 11, go through the next super duo. And pull it kind of snug. You're going to keep snugging it up more and more as you sew. Pick up an 11, go through the next super duo. Pick up another 11, go through the next super duo. You can see it's starting to pull in and cup towards one pole, as in planetary. OK, we're almost there. Now the last 11, you're going to sew through the next super duo and the first 11 that you added this round. Can you see how the needle goes all the way through there? And you're going to pull that snug. And you can see how that's already cupping nicely. Now we're going to work in, this is really peyote stitch that we're doing here, by the way. Now we're going to continue working peyote. I'm going to use a second color 11 so you can really see. We're going to pick up an 11, skip the super duo, and sew through the 11 that we just put in. So this round of super duos, uh, this round of 11s is going to sort of sit, it's going to sit in between the 11s that we just added over the super duo. And this is going to be the innermost ring in your finished bead. Do you see how that's going to look when we're done? Of course you do. Okay. Pick up your next 11, skip the super duo, go through the next 11, pull it snug. Pick up an 11, skip the super duo, go through the 11 from the previous round. And we're going to do this all the way around, adding six more 11s. Now this is important. The next step, we're going to sew through the 11s we're adding now without adding new beads. And we're going to do it as many times as we can fit our needle in thread. Because when you string these beaded beads, this forms the innermost ring so that uh, whatever you string it with doesn't break through there. Now, I finished that. Now I'm going to step up. Let's see if we can get this on camera here. So I've picked up my last copper colored seed bead and gone through the pearly one. Now I'm going to step up by going through without any be adding beads the very first copper bead that we picked up in this round. And now we're going to sew through all these beads without any beads, and it's going to draw that ring in nice and tight. I'm just going to work my way around the circle. And it's kind of on my fingertip right now, just so that I can hold it. And you're going to sew through just the beads that you just added. Move your other thread out of the way. So you can see that those six copper beads are pulled in nice and tight. And you are going to keep going through those beads around and around this ring 
as many times as you can. I found that I could get my needle through two of them at a time. It's easy to see when you have two, the different colors for that inner ring. Be careful when you're doing this not to split the thread either. You just want to do this until it, you really can't get your needle and through the beads. Don't force it or you'll break a bead. But I am not going to knot. I'm not going to weave this in anymore um, because the tension that's being formed by going through the same beads over and over and over again is going to be really nice and snug. Your beadwork is not going to come undone. So you're going to do that as round and around as many times as you can. Then you're going to take your snip. Your bead is half done. Now you have the thread on the other side. All right, so you have your half a bead and your thread is coming from a knot. You don't want to start beading from a knot. You want to go through a bead before you continue. So I'm coming from that size eight and I'm going to pick either, either side, either nibbit, the stitched hole through the wide end without picking up a bead. And I'm going to sew through. And now the next step is right picking up size 11s and putting them in between the nibbits. So here we go again. I'm going to pick up the pearl size 11. You're just reflecting what we did on the other side. And I'll put it on my thumb there to, so you guys can see. Make sure that those wide ends stay together of the nibbits so it stays nice and snug. So I'm adding an 11. You can see how tension is really important here too because you don't want your beaded beads to be too squishy. These are self-supporting. All right, last size 11. Remember you go through the nibbit and the first 11 that you did in this round. I'm going to pull that nice and snug. Now we have to step up. So we're going to go through the next nibbit also. And I'll turn this around. So now we have to go in the opposite direction. We're coming from the inside wide end hole. Now we're going to reverse direction without adding a bead and we're going to go through the outer hole of the narrow tip of the nibbit in the opposite direction. And now the next thing that we pick up are the super duos. Again, remember to check the holes of the two hole beads and you're going to add super duos in between all of the nibbits. There we go. And you can hold these, whatever's comfortable for you. Right now I'm trying to hold them to show you guys how this is done. Um, I'm not holding it up to my face or um, switching direction. Super duos between each nibbit, just like that. Working around. Can you see how they sit? And I'm holding it, I'm going to hold the thread tight between my fingers so you can see how they sit as I finish doing this. Through the narrow hole, make sure you're not getting your thread caught on any of the other beads. And you're going to continue around. This is so fun when you see it start to really come together. And you're going to add the last super duo going through the nibbit and the first super duo added in this round, just like that. Now you're going to step up by sewing in the reverse direction through the open hole of the super duo that you just exited, just like that. So again, you're going to see the thread on the side, but it's going to be hidden. We're going to start to close up the other pole of our little bead here by adding 11s. And like the other side, I'm going to add this color, the pearly color first. I'm going through the super duo. Pick up another 11, go through the next super duo. You're going to do this all the way around. Yeah, they get a little floppy, but you can find the, the open hole there to stitch through. All the way around, six all together in each round. One, two, three, four. Okay. 
And then we're going to pick up the last 11 in this round. We're going to go through the super duo and the first 11 picked up this round. You want to complete the circle and get ready. Look, you can already see how that's cupped in. Now we're going to add the copper beads like we had on the other side. And we're going to work in peyote. So you're coming out of the 11. You're going to pick up another 11. I'm picking up the copper and you're going to skip the super duo and go through the next 11. And you're going to do that all the way around. Come out of an 11, pick up an 11, skip the super duo and go through the next 11. Like that. You pull it nice and tight and work all the way around. Remember to skip the super duo and just go through the 11s. This is peyote stitch. So the new beads that you're picking up are really sitting kind of at the tip of each of the super duos and they may slide off to the side. But when you do the final round and you go through them again, they're going to sit in position. OK, almost done this round. Once the new and last round of 11s are added, and there's just six of them, here we go. You want to make sure, after you go through the last 11 from the previous round, that you step up and go through that first copper bead, or the first 11, in the round that we're stitching. Make sure that they're not stuck on anything. Now you're just going to sew through the beads you just added, around and around and around, all six beads, pulling that as snug as you can. And you're just going to fill those beads with, a, with as much thread as you can, so that just the tension of having that much thread is going to finish off your beaded bead and give you a nice ring of thread to support your bead when you string them. So you're going to keep going around and around and around to get your beaded bead like this. Now you can make one, two, two dozen, <laughs> as many as you want, because what you can then end up with, you can play with all the different colors. You can string them with other really cool beads in between. Here I've got fire polished donuts and seed beads. The sky's the limit when it comes to making nibbit beaded beads. This one uses duets. I'm particularly fond of this one because I think it's very graphic. But you can see how the different textures of the nibbits and the different textures of the super duos, by the way, which are just as diverse, have fun playing with the different colors and finishes, shiny against matte, textured tweeties against solid colors, metal lust with pastels, nibbit beaded beads. So now you know how to make one beaded bead, you can make as many as you want. And remember, you'll find Nibbit beads and other quality beadsmith beads, tools, and supplies from your favorite bead vendor. I'm Leslie Rogowski, Beadsmith Creative Director, saying happy beading.